Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I have Alicia's mic. Will you turn me up a little bit? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Man, I was standing there. The presence of the Lord is so sweet here this morning. God, don't turn your tractor over. I'm afraid you're dead. Amen. I was standing here this morning and I heard this specific word. There's not too many of us this morning in this room, but I felt like specifically, I don't know if this means something to somebody. I felt like the Lord really spoke to me and I heard these words that there's concrete in your back. Does that mean anything to anybody in the room? There's concrete in your back. Concrete in your back really what I heard specifically. Anybody? Yeah, I feel like that word specifically, concrete in your back is what it feels like. Is it right here, right between your shoulder blades, more on the right side? Yeah, that is right there. Yeah. We come up here, sister. Just, uh, just I'm not trying to make you a spectacle or anything. I just felt like the Lord wants to do something specific in your body. That's what I heard, just concrete in your back, just heavy pressure, Solid, I don't know. That's what I heard. But some of you women of God come gather around our sister. This is about Jesus. This is about Jesus. Look at that. I said women of God and all the women in the church come here. Isn't that amazing? That's a church that knows who they are. Just you care, Aaron. Just keep playing for a second. Thank you. Yes. And just this easy. Say, be loosed right now in the name of Jesus. Be loosed right now in the name of Jesus. Be completely healed and completely loose. Be completely healed and completely loosed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah? And this, yeah? Let's pray for Brother Tyler, Dad, Troy, Brother, we come pray. This is Coulter. He's a man of God. Brother Ed, come on, men of God. Men of God, the Lord's presence. When the Lord is present to heal right now in the name of Jesus, it's leaving right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look at that. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we honor you in this place, God. In Jesus' name, be completely healed. Be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. I feel like you may even... Marsh, do you feel it leaving out of your fingertips? I feel like it's leaving out of your fingertips right now. It's going up and out in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, men of God, pray for your brother. Say, be healed, be loosed. In the name of Jesus, every bit of tightness, every bit of tenderness, leave right now in the name of Jesus. This is all about you, Lord. This is about you, Jesus. Doing what you love to do. Doing what you love to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel anything happen? You don't feel the pain no more? It's gone. It's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's blessing our sister. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hey, buddy. Thank you for coming and praying. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Be loosed. It's been there for a long time. And now it's gone. And it's gone forever. And it ain't coming back. It ain't coming back. Check it. Check it, yeah? Yeah, come on. That's right. That's what that's what it has. Come on. Yeah. Jesus is the concrete buster upper. That's how we say it in jacket. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's so good. He's so true. He leaves the 99 goes after the one. And I'm so happy he does. I've been that one, man. I've seen Jesus crawling over the thickets and through the thistles and through the thorns. And he was covered in sweat and dirt. And he didn't even care. And he found me. I was outside the fold. I was outside the flock. And he came right to me. He said, you know what? You're my boy. Put me on his shoulders. And he wasn't mad at me or cursing me. In fact, the Bible says he rejoiced all the way home with me on his shoulders. Aren't you glad he leaves the 99 and goes after the one? Amen. Everybody say amen in the name of Jesus. Thank you, praise amen. team. Thank you, guys. I, we have the best praise team. We're missing Pastor Shaley. But what's amazing about our praise team 
is that even um, even though our the pastor of the worship team's gone, we have amazing folks Amen. here. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the Lord was really giving me this topic to talk about, um, I had a, I was going a totally different directions. I was going to talk about knowing your season. Because if you know your season, you know what God's doing in your life right now, and you have grace and authority to walk in victory in that season. If you recognize your season, I'm like, that's such a good word. Yeah, Lord Jesus, I'll preach that. So I'm preaching it, and I'm like, I got a half a page of note, and the Lord's like pulling me somewhere, and I'm like, but just let me type, Lord. Just let me get this message out, and the Lord kept pulling me this way. And so um, I said, God, are, Lord, are you, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much I, you didn't even have to say it. I knew that's like rhetorical question. Farley, take a lap. So um, the message of this king, the message of this, the title of this message is two kingdoms, two kingdoms. And I, you've probably heard me say this. The Lord's been dealing with me about this, um, this topic for a few weeks now. And he's been growing in me. He's been growing me in some things and I've been seeing some things. And so today is going to be kind of teaching and it's going to be kind of long. And so I will not be offended whatsoever if you leave. I understand people have plans, lunch plans, people have stuff going on, and I will not whatsoever be offended if you leave. But I do want to tell you, we post all of our videos, all of our church services on YouTube. It's River of Faith Church. You can find us on YouTube to catch up on any services you may have missed. And so I encourage you to, to do that. Um, the Lord told us to stop Facebook living because we'd rather have people here in chairs than home on the couch. And so we don't Amen. Facebook Live because people can sit in their pajama pants and eat Pop-Tarts and watch service. And I just don't feel like that's right. Because here's the thing. If you feel like you can have church at home apart from a family, there's a place in your heart that's prideful that says, I can do it away from everybody else. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the, that's usually the hidden fruit of it. But here's what I know. The, the, the Jesus says, he says, I send you out as sheep among wolves. And so in our life, he sends us out in the world as sheep among wolves. Why? So we will stay close to the shepherd. When you're close to the shepherd, you're close to the fold, you're close to the flock. Nobody has ever been close to the shepherd and been far away from the fold. That's right. That's right. Come on. And here's what I know. Have you ever seen what wolves do to the sheep that strays outside? Here's what I would do if I was outside of the fold and I was a sheep. Excuse me, 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 excuse me. There's a the shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just want to encourage somebody today that um, find a fold. I mean, I hope it's this one because I think we have the best church in the world, but yeah. find a fold. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, Pastor Donnie and Laura, I know I'm missing you guys terribly, terribly, terribly. They love you guys very much. And it's an honor for me to fill in for the man of God. Yes. It's Amen. an honor for me to fill in for the man of God. It really is. So let me start with my message, and it's called Two Kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of light, also called the kingdom of heaven. And there's the kingdom of the devil. We'll actually see this in scripture. Jesus himself says that he has a kingdom. And I'll show you that in scripture. So it's just not my idea. It's actually what's revealed to us in scripture. And so there's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. Everybody say amen. And here's what I know. If we together as a family, if we together in the United States begin to focus more on the kingdom of heaven and less on the kingdoms of this earth, we'd understand it's not a political party and it's not what what who's in office because we understand that the things that's happening are a result from a spiritual warfare that we cannot see. Amen. What's happening in the physical has first happened in the supernatural. When we are living constantly in response to what the devil's already doing instead of fighting in a place of prayer and intercession against before the enemy has done. Does that make sense? And so it's, there's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to try to try to just I'm going to make this practical um, and just very teaching. And my aim today, if I were to just sit down and say my aim today for you is for you to have a greater understanding of what is the kingdom of God. Have you ever read the Bible and you see that term over and over again that Jesus preached the kingdom or he preached the kingdom of God or the kingdom is among you. And you read that and you're like, what is the kingdom? Well, let's talk about today. What is the kingdom? But listen, I want, I want to stick this thought in your mind and I want you just to hold on to it. You ready? We can only respond to what we know. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You can only respond to what we know. I was watching Bradley Vanessa. I was actually inside and I was studying and I was worshiping Jesus. And I looked outside and Vanessa's hanging out with Briley. And Vanessa's like working with her with softball. And Vanessa's actually going through like situations with her. When you're in this situation, somebody's doing this, this is how you respond. 
And see, there's going to be situations in your life. If you are constantly living in response to the enemy, you're 10 steps behind instead of already having your heart surrendered, being aware of the enemy's devices and knowing how he, how, who he is and how he operates. And so then you're not living in the defensive all the time. You actually have your sort of offensive and you're taking back kingdom for the, for the Lord. Yeah. Does that make sense? And so let me say it like this. It's, here's another example. This is the example really that the, I feel like the Lord really gave me. If I never knew the thief was in my house, I would just lay asleep in bed. But as soon as I recognize the thief and know my, the thief is in my house, I'm going to respond to the thief, the devil. He does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Except. And so when the enemy comes, here's what he often does is he disguises all those things like in lies. He wants to make sin look good and appear beautiful. But the only reason he's even there is to steal from you, to kill you, and destroy you. That's the only reason why he's there. But he's going to make everything seem so like that's not what it's going to lead to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you need to recognize and when we recognize it, we'll know how to respond. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll respond to what we know. Yeah. And I feel so often the enemy snuck into homes, marriages, minds, bodies, whatever area in life that isn't living in accordance with God's plan. And he hasn't been clearly exposed. And understanding the kingdom of God will expose the devil. Yeah. Listen, you have to have a cornerstone of belief in your theology and how you believe about God. This must be the cornerstone. And Jesus himself says it. Jesus calls himself the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building is being fitted and built together, right? That's what the chief cornerstone does. And so Jesus says it like this. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Bible says that he's the expressed image of the invisible God. The Bible says that Jesus is the brightness of the Father's glory. And so if you're believing something about God that is outside of the life of Jesus, it is wrong belief. That's as straight as I can say it. And I, and I say that constantly to you because that has to become a pillar of how you believe, live your life, and walk this, this walk of faith. Is knowing that Jesus is the image of the Father. But you know what else the New Testament does? It's also a revelation of the enemy. If you just study the Bible, and I did, you could, I encourage you to do it yourself. I've studied, studied, studied this. I've studied more for this sermon than I have any sermon I've ever preached. If you look at the Bible and you see the vocabulary of the devil that is throughout and demons, that is throughout the Old Testament, it's hardly none besides the book of Job. And see, people take the book of Job and make it a pillar of theology when Job isn't, Jesus is. Come on. Yeah. And if you're basing everything off the book of Job, you're going to miss miss the reality and revelation of Jesus. Jesus says it like this. It happens like this. There's Jesus is with his boys and Jesus makes this statement. And he says, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Yes. Then the very next sequence of scripture, what happens? Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, and they go up on a high mountain and they're up on this high mountain and a cloud descends. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is standing there with Moses and Elijah. Moses in your Bible represents the law and Elijah represents the prophets. Peter does what Peter does and he's always talking and I'm like, Peter, stop talking. And so, but anyway, Peter's talking and he says, he says, oh man, it's good for us to be here. Let's basically build three churches, one for you, Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But while he's speaking, so God interrupts Peter and says these words, this is my beloved son, Jesus, hear him. That has to be your cornerstone of belief. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But it's also the revelation of who the enemy is. Did you know in the Bible, never one time did anybody cast out a demon in the Old Testament? Not one time. He knew it. Not one time. Prophets multiplied food. Prophets raised the dead. Prophets influenced nature. Like Jesus did all those things. The one thing, there was actually two things that the prophets didn't do that Jesus did. Cast out demons. Because that's what happens when the kingdom of God comes. And the other thing is, is he opened blinded eyes. Amen. And that's both physically and spiritually. Yeah. See, when Jesus preached, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. Mark chapter 1 verse 14. Why don't you flip there? Why don't you just, can we just take our time and work through this together? Mark chapter 1 verse 14. I'll go there too. We'll be, it'll be a race. If I get there before you, I'll just start reading it. I'm just playing. <laughs> Mark chapter 1, verse 14 says, say amen when you're there. 
Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee. So this is right after Jesus is baptized. The Holy Spirit descends upon him. The Holy Spirit drives him out into the wilderness. He's tempted for 40 days. Comes out, the Bible says, in the power of the Spirit. And this is the first message. This is the first sermon Jesus begins to preach. Listen to what he says. Verse 15, it says, And saying, so Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God in verse 14. Do you see that? And verse 15 says, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Go to Luke chapter 4, verse 43. I'm going to show you in multiple places. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Just flip a book over. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Says this. Oh, let me just read the whole thing because this is so good. Verse 40 says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him being Jesus. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many crying out and saying, you are the Christ, the son of God. And he rebuking them did not allow them to speak for they knew he was the Christ. Now when it was day, he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Right there you actually see the demonstration of the kingdom. Go to Acts chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 1. Flip over a book. A couple books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Acts chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. I thought this portion of scripture was amazing. I found this in my Bible. It says, the former account I made, O Theophilus, because Luke wrote Acts and the book of Luke. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began. Everybody say began. began. What's, he, what's he saying? He's still teaching. He's still speaking. O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. He's still doing and teaching. Until the day in which he was taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. That means that they were just true. They could be undone. That's how true they were. Being seen by them during 40 days, and even after Jesus resurrected, this is what it says he done, and speaking of them, of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So even after Jesus arose for 40 days, what did he, he talk about? The kingdom of God. I think it's important that we understand the kingdom. The message that Jesus preached was the message of what? Of the kingdom of God. And see, I, I want to say this. It's important when you're studying your Bible that your opinion doesn't matter. Come on. And your experiences don't matter. Yeah. And your circumstances don't matter. Jesus' word is the final authority and final truth. Not what you've walked through in your past, but what Jesus is saying now, presently. And so as we're studying the word of what you think the kingdom of God is, I want you to begin to soften that area in your mind so you can see through scripture what the kingdom of God is. You with me? Yeah. So let's start by defining the word kingdom. I was in Bible class this weekend and it convicted my heart. So I'm going to tell you of the who, what, why, where, when, and how of the kingdom of God. I knew Trish would appreciate that. Sister Trish. I'm going to tell you about the who, the what, the why, the where, when, and how of the kingdom of God. Listen, let's define the word kingdom in your Bible. The word kingdom in your Bible, or if you're taking notes, write this down. It's Strong's G932. I want you to see it. See, I'm learning as a pastor, as a teacher of the word of God. All I can do is drop things in your heart and your spirit, but it's your job to take them and grow them up into things. Yeah. And so all I can do is point and in a direction and it's your job to go there or not and so i'm just trying to point you to some things i want to help us get a, a better understanding of the kingdom of god because if we understand how his kingdom works it'll it'll reveal how the kingdom of darkness works yeah. for example the kingdom of god or the kingdom of jesus is called the kingdom of the son of his love and so what governs the government in the kingdom love and so what governs so that tells me what governs the government of of the devil hatred do you see how simple that is? 
And so when you see one, it exposes the other. Then we'll know how to do what? Respond. I think today what I want to do with you is I want to send you out that door with more authority than you ever knew you had. And you'll see that in the kingdom of God. So this word is Strong's G932, and this word is Basilia. And this word means a rule, royalty, kingdom, and a reign. A reign is a period in which a sovereign ruler reigns. And so this is just the reigning, the royal, the, royal, the, the kingdom. Okay, that's what that word means. That's pretty, pretty straight. But this comes from another Greek word, Basilias, which is G932. And so Basilia comes from this word, Basilias, which means king. So when you put those together, what do you have? This is the who is King Jesus. The what, what is the kingdom of God? It is the ruling reign of a sovereign king, Jesus. The who is Jesus. This is going to be basic for some of you, but for some of you it may not. The who is Jesus and the kingdom of God is the ruling reign of a sovereign king, Jesus. Now let's answer the why. Now I'll put a lot of information into why because this is why did Jesus come and demonstrate the kingdom of God. My brother Robert started getting into my sermon at the end of discipleship class. If you don't come to discipleship class, I encourage you to be there at 930. Yeah. So this is the why. What is the point of the kingdom of God? Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. I'll flip there with you. We're going to start in verse 22. While you're there, stay there. I'm going to go read a different scripture. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. You guys okay? Stay with me. You have to come with me. Look at the person next to you and say, go with that guy. Go with that guy. Go with that guy. So I'm going to read the first verse out of Matthew. Chapter 12, verse 22, and I'm going to read the first verse out of, of, of Luke. But let's read the first verse of Matthew first. Uh, Matthew first. Verse 22 in Matthew 12 says, Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he, Jesus, healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. Okay, pot, hold your finger right there and look at me. Look at my nose. Don't keep reading. I've noticed that if I stop talking, people just keep reading. What does it say next? Go home and read it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Luke chapter 11, verse 14. Listen to this. In the, I just want to read this. This is the same account, but a different, a different gospel author, okay? This is what it's recorded in Luke chapter 11, verse 14. It says, and when he was casting out a demon, and it was mute. What was? The demon, the demon was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. So was the man mute or was the demon do you see how that works? Remember, possessed in your Bible, doesn't it doesn't mean possession as we hear it in our Western minds. And that challenges people's thinkings. The word possessed in the, your Bible, if you study the word out, it means to be under the power of. There you go. It means to be under the power of. And you as a Christian can absolutely be under the power of a demonic influence yes. in your life. That's right. That's right. Verse 22 of Matthew 12 says, man, I feel that. Let me say it like this. If you know somebody, and we, I, we all do, that are sincere, born-again, spirit-filled Christians, love Jesus all their heart, but it's like they can never get over something. There's always a temptation. There's always something in their life that's keeping them and holding them. We're actually, Jesus talks about it here in Matthew 12, and he calls it a strong man. But Jesus says there's a stronger. Amen. And so we're going to learn how to deal with that. But if somebody's in that place, and no matter how much they fasted, how much they've confessed, they've done everything scripturally, rightly, and they can't get free, I'm telling you, there's a place of discernment in the Holy Spirit that you discern and see if they actually need deliverance from demonic oppression. There's so many people that can't get free. I preached this two Wednesdays ago. My brother here was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. He don't smoke no more. Isn't that awesome? There was another woman that was here. She said she was smoking and vaping every day. Preach this message that easy, that simple, and completely delivered. Is that amazing? Yes. yes. Because in, in our Western world, see, if we, if we know it, how do we know how to respond? Yes. You see what I'm trying to tell you with the authority thing? Okay, let's read on in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Let's just read through it. 
verse 23, it says, And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Pause your finger and hold right there, because I don't have this in my notes, but I want to say this. God made a promise to David that there would be somebody from him, from his lineage, from one of his boys, one of his sons, would sit forever on the throne of Israel. There's a king in a kingdom. And so the people recognized the lordship in the kingdom of God in Jesus because they had never seen a demon cast out before. It had never been done before. That was new. This is new to the folks. This is new to people. And so, and it seems to be new to people. And Chris says, yeah. <laughs> and it seems to be new to people. And so when they see it, they're recognizing, oh, there's a greater king here than the kingdom of darkness. And so they're recognizing his lordships, but here's what happens. So they're recognizing the lordship of Jesus. Ask this question. Verse 24 says, now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow, this fellow, how you see Jesus is the place you exalt him to. How you see Jesus is the place you exalt him to. It says, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. He doesn't cast out demons except by the devil. That Beelzebub, his name actually means Lord of the Flies. He was a Philistine deity. He's a Philistine god. And they said, the only way Jesus even does this, because he does it with the, the devil himself. Can you imagine that accusation against Jesus? Verse, 20, verse 25 says, but Jesus knew their thoughts. Did you know Jesus knows your thoughts? Yes. That's why it's important to take them captive. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom? Do you see as a kingdom? Yeah. How will his kingdom stand? Just Paul, hold your finger right there on verse 27. Look at me. So everything about the kingdom of darkness is an exact opposite, exact counterfeit of the kingdom of light, except for one thing. And I knew when I'd say that, everybody would be like, what? The structure. The structure of the kingdom of darkness is actually structured like the kingdom of light. Why? Because he's seen it. And so when there's actually the devil and there's different principalities and there's rulers and there's and there's um, you can see that you can study it. I'm not going into that right now, but there's actually there's there's a devil and there's kind of people under him and there's people under them. Um, it's not good to teach and preach experiences, but I'm going to just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. There's been people that I know or times where somebody may see a big demon standing in a doorway. That's big. That's as big as the doorway. Big, black, 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 black. It's blacker than the, than the night of, of night. And then in the room at the same time, there may be little demons running around the room. That's happened. Okay, does it freak you out or is it true? Okay. So I just want you to know, I'm just telling you he has a kingdom. And Jesus, Jesus is actually revealing to us how his kingdom works. Because he's saying, hey, the devil knows if he can cause division, he can bring you down. Absolutely. So what's the tactic of the enemy? Bring division. That's what he's doing. He's actually revealing one of the tactics of the enemy. If he can, divide, is, um, if he can cause division in your home, between your kids, between your, you and your spouse, especially in churches. That's how he knows. If he can divide us, he can dismember us. Right. And then we lose authority in that place. Amen? Amen. But in the kingdom, if we all focus on the kingdom, we're all back into unity. Yeah. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Verse 27 says, And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the what? Kingdom. The kingdom of God has come upon you. So what's the sure mark of the kingdom of God? The casting out of demons. Did you see that? Because when the kingdom of God comes, the kingdom of darkness has to leave. Amen. And everybody in the kingdom of darkness. Okay, now hold on to that because this is going to get a lot more exciting in a few, few, uh, in a little bit. <laughs> hold on, hold on, guys. Or how can you enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. Everybody say bind. bind. Unless he first binds the strong man. So how, the how of the kingdom of God. So we see the purpose of the kingdom of God and the how right here in these verses. And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. So who's the who? Who's the who? Jesus. What's, what is it? What's the what? It's the reign of the sovereign rule Jesus. Here's the why. To bind and cast out devils and demons. Do you see the why? That's the purpose of the kingdom of God. 
is to drive out darkness. You, you see that in your Bible? Okay, I'm not crazy. A little bit. <laughs> the who is Jesus? The what is the ruling reign of a sovereign king? I'm seeing pens everywhere. I'm loving all the writing. And the why is to cast out the devil. Yeah? Let's keep going. See, the enemy is the strong man. And Jesus is the stronger man. Yeah. That's what he's saying. And Jesus binds him. And another way to look at that word is to remove all power from. Yeah. Somebody's bound, they have no power. And see, that's exactly how it is right now in our lives. Is the enemy, he still may be present, but he's bound, he's powerless. And the only power he has over our lives is what we give him. Yeah. And here, let me tell you this. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I feel prompted to say it. You know what the fruit of a lie is? Doubt. The fruit of a lie is doubt. We know the fruit of sin when it is full grown. It eventually produces what? But the fruit of a lie is doubt. If the enemy can come and make you question the truth of the word of God, immediately faith is eliminated. Let me give you a couple examples. If you believe, this is one that's common, so I talk on it often. If you believe that Jesus Christ makes you sick to teach you a lesson, will you have any faith for healing? But is it our right and our authority according to the kingdom of God? Yes. 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 Here's an even one that will even be more in people's kitchen. If you don't believe tithing is actually a principle established today, you won't do it. But you have to understand that tithing was given before the law of Moses. Tithing was given in Abraham. And it was a principle established in Abraham when Abraham went out and he warred with the kings and he got much spoil, lots of spoil. He came back and he met a type and shadow of Jesus. And this type and shadow of Jesus, his name was king of righteousness, king of Salem. And so Abraham takes everything he had just won from defeating those kings and he gives a tenth of it to Jesus. Jesus brings out bread and wine, which is a foreshadow of communion, saying, you gave me this. I'm one day I'm going to give my blood, my blood, my blood and my body. So it's a foreshadow of even all the way up to the redemption. Go study this in your Bible. And here's what Jesus says in response to Abraham of giving him a tithe of everything he just won. I'm trying to stay calm so I can communicate this, but I'm losing my mind on the inside. <laughs> Come on, brother. So, so Abraham gives this type and shadow, the priests of God, 10% of everything he had just conquered. Yeah? Here's what Jesus done. The type and shadow of Jesus looks at him and says, because you've done this right now in this moment. Forever, forever, people will pay a tithe to the priests or to the people that take care of the things of God. Come on. And so now you tithe to take care of the people that toil in the word so you can live your life and they come here and be edified. Amen. So it, so it takes the muzzle off of pastors. It takes the muzzles off of preachers and teachers when you tithe so they can actually counsel people, be with people throughout the day and rightly study and divide the word of truth. Am I wrong or right? You're right. Yeah, so that's why he tithes. But if the enemy can say, but here's, here's, here's what happens. Here's the detriment of that. Man, I feel that convicting hearts. Now, don't, be, don't be convicted and condemned. Be convicted and change. Absolutely. Amen. Good. Good and so here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to lie to you and tell you, well, tithing's not for today. You know what he's doing? He's stealing from you. He doesn't come except to, because the Lord Jesus, the kingdom, if the enemy's about destruction, and the, and the enemy's kingdom is all about destruction. That means God's kingdom is all about what? Multiplication and provision. If, if the enemy's kingdom is full of poverty, and that means God's kingdom is full of provision. And it's not so you can have a big house and a fancy car. It's so that you can actually bless your brother when he needs some help. But if you refuse to tithe, the enemy can never multiply back into your bosom to be a blessing for people when they need it. And so it's not just affecting you, it's affecting a whole nation of things. Come on. That's good. It actually affects generations. Yeah. That actually was the promise that the foreshadow of Jesus gave back to Abraham, which says, your generations will now receive a tithe. Because when we tithe, we're thinking about us, and Jesus is thinking about your generations. Jesus is saying, you gave me now, I'm giving to your grandkids, your great-grandkids, and your great-great-grandkids. What you sow today will be reaped in generation, in generation, in generation. Amen. And that is both with the things of the kingdom and the things of the kingdom of the devil. That's why the father says, I will visit the iniquity of the fathers on their children's children's children. To the third and fourth generation. Oh. That's good. Come on. 
Because we, we are so, uh, do not be, let me say it like that. Do not be so small minded to think that you're in the kingdom for you. See, he's a thief and he steals from us. And if he can make us, if he can lie to us, you know what it does? It eliminates faith. And you know what the kingdom of God does? It exposes the lie. It says, no, that is wrong. That is not the nature and character of God. It's wrong. Come against it. Here's what the kingdom of God, when you begin to understand what I'm telling you, it'll take you from praying for the sick to healing the sick. And there's a huge difference between the two. The difference between one and the other is the difference between heaven and earth. Jesus says that when you pray, pray, our Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Because that is the kingdom of God. It is heaven on earth now. And so if there's anything that's not in heaven, when the kingdom of God comes... It's not allowed to be here on earth. That is the authority of the kingdom of God. That is the how. Listen, Jesus says he binds. He binds him. So that means he takes all of his power. See, that's exactly what happened. The Jews were looking for a Messiah to come and remove the Roman occupation out of Israel. Israel was being occupied by Rome. And so Rome is now influencing. This is exactly how the kingdom of darkness works. So now Rome is influencing the people of God with their own rules, with their own laws, with their own culture. And so when Jesus would come along and say, hey, listen, there's a greater kingdom called the kingdom of God. And now you no longer live under the rule, the laws, or the government of the devil. But you now live under the rule, the laws, and the reign of a true king, Christ Jesus. Because wherever you dwell, like, like we are the citizens of the United States of, of, of America. And so we listen to the government of the United States of America. We're in subjection to them, yeah? Mm -hmm. And as communism grows, they take our guns. We'll be more in subjection to the government tomorrow than we were today. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. <laughs> But we listen to the government until they begin to violate one of the laws of the kingdom. Yeah. Come on. Then we say no more. Yeah. That's far enough. We don't yeah. go no further. Mm -hmm. Because we live in a greater kingdom. This is all temporal. Temporal kingdom. Yes. That's an eternal one. Yeah. Come on. See, bind here. Going back to bind. You guys still with me? Look at the person next to you and say, are you with that guy? <laughs> <laughs> See, bind here means to tie, bind, or my favorite, my favorite definition, ah, to put under obligation. You know what that means? It means that it has to listen to you for legal purposes. The demon and the devil has to listen to you for legal purposes. And let me tell you something. The devil is an expert lawyer. If there is anything that he can actually use to accuse you, condemn you, make you sick, or do anything in your life rightfully because of unconfessed sin, unrepentance, willful, willfully running from God. That is placing yourself back under the subjection and obligation of the enemy. And so, but outside of that place and back into Christ Jesus, and your heart's clean, you've repented from your sin, you're pursuing Jesus. Now, when you command the devil, the devil is not our master. We're the devil's master now. You get it? Amen. So now he has to legally, by law, because of Jesus, the true king and the true kingdom, he now has to legally listen to us. Let's, let's go on. Let me, let me talk about this word some more. See, it's just like a police officer. When a police officer pulls you over, he has the authority to say, you are under arrest, yeah? You can resist arrest. You're going to get maced and, and tased. tased. <laughs> Around here, maybe shot. <laughs> <laughs> because they have the authority to, yeah? Because why? They was given it. Do you get it? Because they was given it. Yes. Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> Come on, let that get in you. See, stop, some of you need to stop praying for things and start demanding what's yours. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Stop praying for some things and start demanding. Start demanding healing. Start demanding an open womb. Stop. Start demanding provision because rightfully, according to what we just read, it's ours. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
Because that's the kingdom of God. When you understand the kingdom, you understand your authority. See, when we say, demon, get out. You have no place here. It has to leave. And they're under the obligation. The legal law, they're bound. They, they have to leave. Whether they want to or not. They have to. Because of the name of Jesus. He's the final authority. He's the final authority in the situation. He's the final authority all the time Jesus is. See, it's, you know, there's an instance in your Bible where someone had such a revelation of, how am I doing? What time is it? It don't matter. Now, somebody tell me or else you won't be asking what's for lunch. What's, you'll be asking what's for dinner. You're good. You're good. Just keep going. Okay. No, you're doing real good. There was an instance in your Bible where someone had a great understanding of the kingdom of God. And it was a Roman centurion. And the Roman centurion had a servant that he loved dearly, the Bible says. And the servant was super sick and he was about to die. So the Roman centurion actually sends another messenger to Jesus. The messenger comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, please, my master, a Roman centurion. There's another servant at the home and he's sick. But my master says... He, he's not even worthy to have you to come under his roof. But instead, just say the word and he'll obey it. Because my master knows him also being a man under authority. When he says to one to go, he goes. When he says to one to do this, he does it. It's the same in the kingdom of God. Do you get it? If you don't know who Smith Wigglesworth is, you should look him up. But there was a time... Amen. Where he was walking down the stairs and he said the devil flung his kitchen table across the house. And he said, put my table back and get out right now in the name of Jesus. And he said, real slowly, the table scooted back to where it was. He just didn't make him leave. He made him fix his stuff. How many times has he thrown stuff around in your life and you just let him because he's never been exposed? He's my preaching buddy. Look at this guy. He's, he said, yes. <laughs> not anymore. We got Jesus and he's greater. Amen. See, I keep saying it and I know, I know that it's, you get it, but I want you to get it. We have the superior kingdom. We have the greater king. Would you just say that? We have the greater king. Come on. Just say his name, Jesus. See, if he's, I'm going to say it again. If he's bound, he has no more power. Amen. If he's bound, he has no more power. But listen, what, what did the strong man have? He had goods. Do you see that? See, there's nothing good in the devil. So whose goods did he have? He has your goods. He has your joy. He has your peace. He has your health that he's stolen. And until a greater than he comes onto the scene... And you recognize the kingdom and the authority of God in the kingdom and your authority as a son of God in the kingdom to bind him so you can get your stuff back. Absolutely. Get your stuff back. Someone needs to go get their stuff. All I can do is point you in the right direction. Whether you do it or not, it's totally up to you. Amen. Somebody needs to go get their stuff back. Somebody go get their stuff back. Somebody go get their kids back. Somebody get their finances back. Somebody get their marriage back. Say, you know what? I've had enough of the enemy's reign in my house. Leave right now in the name of Jesus. And he has to. And now everything in your house can come under subjection to the kingdom. But if you don't want that, and you want these other things like sin, unrepentance, or if you have anything in your life that's in the dark, like if you're watching pornography, or you have an addiction that nobody knows about, all that darkness gives the enemy power. That unbinds him to rule your life once again. And so don't expect the benefits of the king in a kingdom when you're living like the devil. Come on. Amen. Come That's on. easy. That has, to be, that has to be true down the middle. That's why he says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. That word repentance in your Bible, it means more than just turning from your sin. It means to change the way that you think. Right. And so he's saying, repent and start thinking according to the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what he's saying. He's saying, you're thinking that the devil's still ruling over you, but when your mind begins to change, because the thoughts that you allow to rule your mind are the thoughts that rule your life. Yes. Yes. 
And when your mind begins to change and how your thinking begins to change, you'll begin to live in one kingdom instead of the other. The true kingdom. The everlasting one. Amen. See, he binds him. Everybody say bind him. That's how. You see? Listen to this. I'm going to talk about this some more. Go to Luke chapter 13. We're talking about the how. We're still in the how. So the who. <laughs> the who. I love you, Levi. The who is Jesus. The what is the role of King Jesus. The why is to destroy the works of the enemy. To expel darkness. However you want to word it. To destroy the devil. That's the why of the kingdom. Luke chapter 13. Let me just turn there. You guys okay with me? Yes. No. That's, that's all right. <laughs> I'll still be okay if you're if you're not okay with me, because he's okay. <clears throat> oh, let's. See. Can I just start in verse ten? I don't have time to start in verse ten, but I'm going to start in verse ten. It says, "Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. He's in church, right? And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years." Can you imagine? Did you know spirits will stay around for a long time if you don't deal with them? Yeah. Did we just see that? Yeah. They're not just coming and going. They're coming and staying. Yeah. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. That word means weakness. 18 years and was bent over and in no way could raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loosed. Everybody say loosed. loosed. You are loosed from your infirmity. Come Amen. on. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of this synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, the ruler of the synagogue said, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord, oh, my Lord of love. He's so the best. The Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite. He said, that word hypocrite in your Bible isn't somebody that's trying to live in a relationship with Jesus and keeps making mistakes. That word hypocrite in your Bible means a play actor. It means somebody that has many masks. They walk into their house, they put a mask on. They walk into the church, they put a mask on. That's why Pastor Donnie, you hear him say it often. It's time to take the mask off. Because that's what a hypocrite means. It's a play actor. It's one person that might play three or four different people. And so if you're sincerely trying to follow Jesus, do not ever allow the, get the enemy again to call you a hypocrite. You're not. You're a sincere, born-again child of God, and the enemy has no authority over your life, and you keep trying, keep seeking, keep pursuing, and the things you struggled with yesterday, you will not struggle with tomorrow, because you'll know that truth, and that truth will set you free. Amen. Don't, ever let, don't ever let the enemy call you a hypocrite again. So, so Jesus is saying, no way, man, you're two-faced, because why? Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? Listen to what he says. He said, come on, so even on the Sabbath day, when we're not supposed to do anything, your animal needs water. Do you see how Jesus looks at healing? It's like, it's life. Water is life in your Bible. Water is life. And, and, and the natural, water is life. Listen to what he says. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has found. Oh, you see it? Anybody starting to see it? Who Satan has bound. Listen to what he says. He says, think of it. He say, you know what he's saying? He's saying, why do you have no compassion for this woman? For 18 years, she's lived like this. For 18 years, he says, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. Amen. You see that? Yes. That word bound right there is the same word that Jesus used when he said, I'm going to bind the strong man. And we're going to take his stuff. <laughs> it's the same word. Go to John chapter 3, or 1 John, excuse me. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Are you guys having fun? Yes. And 2. 1 John chapter 3. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Verse 8. I want you to see this, see this verse. We talked about this verse this morning. And when Pastor Robert said it, I about come unglued. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Say amen when you're there. Amen. 
you could there's a lot in a lot in these that the context of this verse, but I want to I want to show you verse eight. It says, "He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil." You know what that word "destroy" in the Greek means? To bind. <laughs> For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might bind the works of the devil. Do you see? Are you seeing the how? And so uh, that's why he said be loose because the woman had been bound. But she wasn't bound by what we would naturally would have thought would have been a disease or sickness. She was bound by a demon, a spirit of infirmity. But when we command, whether we say demon or not, like Jesus did. He just said, be loosed. Why? Because she had been bound. And that's what a spirit infirmity does. It binds. Yes. You see in all this? Listen, I kind of talked about this, but I'm just going to keep saying some things. Our enemy is a spiritual enemy. Yes. Yeah? And we needed a spiritual victory. Yes. And see, that's why the Jews were looking for Jesus or for their Messiah to come and overthrow the occupation of Rome off of Israel. But here's what happens when that happens. is say many judges and kings God would raise up throughout the Old Testament. And they would do just that. They would sin and, and commit idolatry. And so then an enemy nation would come in and take them captive. Then God would raise somebody up and set that nation free. And then usually in about 40 years what happened to the person. They died. And then what happened to the nation? It would have been the same cycle. Because the real enemy was the devil. Yes. And so we needed a spiritual victory. Yes. And that's exactly what our greater king done. Amen. Yes. See, there, there is a time. There's going to be a day. Don't hear me wrong. There's going to be a day. The kingdom is now and will be. Yes. The kingdom is now and will be. And so the kingdom of God is now. But one day it will be. Here on this earth, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, and the kingdom of God will be on this earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. This is the purpose of the kingdom of God. Now, let me ask this question, because this is a good question. Where is the kingdom of God? Go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Brother Robert was ahead of us. Let's read verses 20 and 21. Are you guys okay? Yes. Are, you, are you starting to see some of your authority? Yes. You're starting to see some things different. If you, I'm telling you, how you see will determine how you respond. Yeah. <laughs> Luke, where did I send you? Okay, that's perfect. Luke 17, verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. So that means it doesn't come with just by looking with your eyes. Yeah. So if it doesn't come with observation, I believe this. It comes with participation. Yes. Participating with the king and what he wants to do. Yeah. It does not come with observation. Verse 21 says, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Where is this kingdom of a greater king living and dwelling? Within you. Within you. See, I'm convinced that whenever we wanted to, revival could break out. Amen. Because I feel like a lot of times we're waiting for God to do something that he's already given us the authority to do. Yes. You have more authority than what you know. There is a greater king with a greater kingdom living inside of you. Amen. Amen. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. You're doing good, brother. I want to. I want to. I've made this point. I got way ahead of myself, and so I'm just going to go through and make sure I didn't miss anything. I, I am going to say this. Stop waiting for God to do something he already gave you the authority to do. Right. However, you must align your life and your thinking with his word. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
You must align your life and your thinking with his word. You'll never walk in the kingdom if you constantly choose to live in sin. Amen. Let me say it like this. Don't expect to walk in the authority of the kingdom of God if you are living in willful sin, unconfessed sin, self-seeking, unforgiveness. That's like expecting the benefits of a marriage but ignoring your vows. This is, this is a New Testament reality. This is a New Testament reality. You understand what I mean by that? That means it was in the Old, it was in the Old Testament, but it was concealed. But now it's been revealed in the New Testament what the true <laughs> kingdom of God is. And it's the ruling reign of a king on this earth. See, observation means seen and inspected with the eyes. But our reality is a, it's an invisible reality. The kingdom of God is an invisible reality. Why? Because we have an invisible we have an invisible enemy, and so then it's all acted on by faith. Yep. Yep. See, it's you have to understand faith. It's the prayer of faith yep. that will save the sick. Amen. Yes. It's not wishful thinking. It's not even moving out of self pity. Yep. It's believing. believing, and when you begin to see the kingdom of God and who we're made for. And the one that's living inside of us. Faith is inevitable. You will believe. Amen. Stop begging for finances and get a job. And allow God to have his way in your money. Come on. See, once this reality of the kingdom of God is inside of me, it's where he's at. We just read it, yeah? This isn't my word, it's his. When it becomes real to us, we'll have a new awareness of the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. I am going to say this. I'm almost done. I'm going to answer one more question. Let me read this. Jesus. Whenever an area of our life is not surrendered to God, I've said this once, but I'm going to say it again because it's important. Or an area of your life is still in darkness, that area of your life is still under the rulership of the kingdom of darkness. Yep. Yeah. Amen. And just come out of it. Yeah. Confess, repent, and come out. Yeah. Right. It's that simple. That's what the word of God says. Amen. Because when you confess it, don't you don't have to get up and confess it in front of everybody. Find somebody that is a true, born again, spirit filled Christian yes. that bears good fruit, yes. and you go and confess and repent to them. Yes. And then what you're doing is you're bringing it from out of the darkness and into the light. Because if it's here in darkness, yes. the enemy. You know what the enemy does when people live with sin in the darkness? They walk in condemnation. Yes. They walk in guilt. There's no faith there. You can never walk in victory. And all that stuff is putting you back under the subjection or obligation, like we talked about, yeah. of the devil. Yeah. That's right. Come out of that stuff. That's the best way I can say it. I'm going to read one more thing. I'm almost done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Oh, don't open that on the microphone. <laughs> all right. This is my first time, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say amen when you're there. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. <coughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Can we come here for a second? Yeah, come here. Come up here. I need some help, Jack. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you, buddy. Amen. So here we find the wind. You know what that word at hand means in your Bible? Has arrived. Now. It's here. It's now. It's right now. Amen. Whenever you want to begin to act and live <coughs> in the kingdom of God, you have the right and privilege to. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. You guys okay? Yeah. Do you guys stand with me? I'm done. I kept you long enough. Let me just pray for you guys. 
I would just like to invite some, some folks forward. Um, I'm just going to give the invitation. I, I just feel led to. It's not something that I want to do. It's something I feel like the Holy Spirit's saying right now. If there's something in your life that you feel like you need deliverance from, would you be bold and courageous and just come to the front? <coughs> Yes, yeah, be bold. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Just that act right there is you moving from one kingdom to his kingdom. Amen. Hey, Jack. Men and women of God, would you guys help me? Let's pray for our brothers and sisters. Some of you folks join me up here. Ask them if, if you feel led to. Ask them what they need. And pray specifically for that.